Haiti's prime minister has agreed to resign after weeks of increasing gang violence. This follows crisis talks between Caribbean leaders and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken aimed at halting surging unrest. Haiti has been described as being at a tipping point as armed criminal gangs overwhelm parts of the capital. Ariel Henry has held the roles of prime minister and acting president since 2021, following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. He has made this statement in the last few hours. Last night, the Council of Ministers accepted to put a transitional presidential council in place. The members of this council will be picked after agreement with different sectors of the national life. The government I am running will remove itself immediately after the establishment of this council. Armed criminal gangs had been demanding Henri's resignation for weeks while unleashing what some experts have called a low-scale civil war inside Haiti. Scores of people have been killed and thousands have been left homeless. Thousands of families in Haiti have been forced to flee their homes as armed gangs take control of much of the capital. I worked for the Ministry of Social Affairs for over 20 years and was able to build my own house. But now here I am, homeless. I'm fleeing without knowing where to go. It's an abuse. The violence ramped up once again in Port-au-Prince over the weekend. Armed gangs attacked police stations and they set part of the interior ministry on fire. Many Haitians have been killed or seriously wounded. It's a matter of life and death, and there's no question of public or private ownership of state property. Imagine if we were all killed in Port-au-Prince. What use would this building be? What are we going to do with it? Armed groups unleashed chaos in late February in an effort to oust Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who was visiting Kenya. There, he lobbied for a UN-backed deployment of a police force from the East African country to fight gangs. He could not return home after his plane was refused permission to land. Calls for peace are amplifying. Washington is discussing a proposal to introduce urgent political reforms with the Caribbean community and Haitian politicians. The US and the European Union have evacuated their diplomatic staff from Haiti due to the surge in violence. And with no prime minister and violent gangs now in control, only international intervention is likely to restore order. Journalist Harold Isaac is in the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Here's his assessment of the security situation on the ground. Well, after the wave of violence that swept through the city uh, last week, we had a bit of a reprieve for the past over uh, 36 hours where folks were able to resupply and uh, some uh, fuel was allowed to come out of terminals. Um, so um, it is a very fragile situation, honestly, here. Um, and we don't know how the gangs will react to nearly two elements, the new, uh, the, the news of the, the, the resignation of Prime Minister Henri and the news of the new presidential council that will lead the country. Tell us more about this uh, new presidential council. Uh, is there already, are there already indications of how gangs might respond to this? Well, um, the formula that was uh, presented and adopted both by the CARICOM countries, the international community, and the Haitian stakeholders was a seven-member uh, presidential council that would lead to, uh, to elections uh, in, in the near future. Uh, and the gangs uh, themselves had... I, demanded uh, resignation uh, of Ariel Henry, uh, but it's unclear how they will react to that uh, that council that doesn't include directly members that would be affiliated to them. Hmm. Where does all this leave the possibility of an international security force uh, potentially led by Kenya, do you think? 
It's still in the plans. I mean, it's one of the key points discussed uh, by the various stakeholders and the international community yesterday at that meeting in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, but that being said, the timeline and also the funding uh, has yet to be uh, clarified. Uh, there's a lot of uh, funds that have been pledged, but in terms of effective money that is available for the mission, that has been a point of contention between the various uh, countries involved. Journalist Harold Isaac, thank you so much for providing your insights on this developing story. We very much appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.